Hello, Dr. Meg here. Now, I did promise I would talk about natural diet and how to feed a natural diet to your breeding dogs this week, but then I thought what I need to talk about first is why not use commercial kibbles. So, I do want to go over a few things that I absolutely detest about commercial kibbles and just sort of put that in perspective. The way I look at commercial kibbles, it's a bit like how you might look at having um, takeaway pizza or going to uh, Burger King. You know, you wouldn't want to live on it, but it's okay on Saturdays or whatever. Um, so in small doses, I don't see anything wrong with commercial foods, but I do see a lot wrong with basing our dog's diets on it, um, whether that be our breeding dogs or whether that be the puppies that we send off into their forever homes. So um, I want to go through a few things that I don't like about commercial food and then you can make up your own mind and next week those that are interested can learn how I recommend that you can feed a healthy natural diet to your breeding dogs that meets all their needs. So let's get into it. Well the first thing I really don't like about commercial foods is that they're very highly processed. You know, they're, they're heated under extreme heat to destroy any bacteria and um, fungi and other toxins that are lurking in them. And very, very um, heavily processed to the point where a lot of the natural enzymes are denatured and a lot of the proteins are also denatured and um, transformed into a less digestible form. So. The stuff that ends up is not as digestible as it would have been if it was in its natural original form. So another thing I really don't like about a lot of commercial foods is that even the most expensive ones available on the market are usually around about 50% carbs. So they either have carbs in the form of wheat and corn or they have carbs in the form of legumes. So the grain free ones will instead of use things like peas um, and beans and lupins and that, things of that nature, the legumes. And I did talk about legumes and the danger of legumes, particularly their content of phytoestrogens and a lot of um, anti-nutrients in legumes, which can damage your dog's reproductive performance and general health. Um, grains have got glutens in them, of course, and, um, you know, a dog... Is a 50% carbohydrate diet. That's not a natural diet for a carnivore, is it? Me. Hey. Kaiser agrees with me there. So that's another thing I don't like about commercial preparations. And you'll find even the really expensive brands are still about 50% carbs. So you're paying a lot of money for very cheap filler foods. Another thing that I really don't like about commercial foods um, is the fats in them uh, and the fact that they often take quite a long time um, at normal temperatures to actually go from the factory that manufactures them, they're transported to the shop, um, they sit in the shop for a while uh, before they go to your place and if you buy a big bag it might take you some time to get through the bag. And if it happens to be hot weather at any time during that period, or if it's a prolonged period of time, the fats that are in the food will eventually go rancid. Now rancid fats can cause chronic inflammation in the body. Whether you get a cheap biscuit or kibble uh, where the fat's baked into it and with the uh, more expensive ones, they spray the fat on after they cook the kibble uh, to make it more palatable but uh, they're still prone to going rancid. Another thing I don't like about commercial foods is that they often put artificial colours in them to make them more appealing to the humans that buy them for their pets. Of course, the pets can't tell any difference and wouldn't care, but the, these artificial colours uh, have been associated with health issues um, and cancer, for example. And of course, we also can see behavioral issues and allergies have been known to be caused by some of the colors in um, children. So there's no reason to suspect that this wouldn't be happening in some of our pets as well. 
and we're talking here about particular colours that have been identified as culprits like the blue and the red colours and caramel colours for example. Now a big criticism of um, raw meaty diets um, is often that they can be contaminated with bacteria and um, you know they can that's true they can have pastorella or salmonella um, are not uncommonly contaminating raw food but of course if you buy human quality food to begin with the um, it's not likely to have much contamination on it is it so that's a good thing but we often see similar levels of contamination with commercial food which you don't often hear about do you so it's not uncommon for salmonella for example to be a contaminant of commercial pet food and last week I talked a bit about bad plastics making their way into commercial pet food uh, because of the wrappings on um, discarded meat products that have gone past the use by date often end up being diverted into the pet food industry um, food chain and then of course the, the way we package uh, pet food often in BPA lined um, tins or um, bad plastics lining the, the big bags that we have them in as well. So we talked about how they can disrupt um, the reproductive performance of our dogs last time in the last email. So look out for that one, check it out. But needless to say here, um, plastics are a common contaminant of commercial pet foods and something to be avoided. Now another thing um, that we did touch on last week but I want to reiterate here is that um, even though it's not supposed to happen, euthanized animals, now here we're talking livestock, um, can make their way into the food chain. So when you see on a label for commercial pet food the words meat meal, bone meal or animal fats, and that could come from anywhere. It could come from roadkill. It could come from euthanized animals. And it really is the bottom of the of the barrel as far as quality of um, ingredients. So you have to watch out for that. Um, and really, you want to be buying food that ha is made from all um, human quality sources and has named. Uh, actual ingredients rather than being derived from you know general ingredients like meals and things. Those meat meals and bone meals also can contain uh, barbitals like um, pentobarbital which is a euthanasia drug and this can harm the liver of our pets, particularly our dogs. Animals who've been treated with antibiotics often make their way into the pet meat food chain as well and those antibiotics can end up uh, being in our animal food and um, affect our animals as we outlined in last week's. Uh, preservatives. Now preservatives are, are used in fairly high doses in commercial pet food especially kibbles because they're not refrigerated. So sulfites are, are used to um, suppress bacterial and fungal growth. Uh, sulfites are a neurotoxin and they're also in wines and that's why sometimes you can get a really bad hangover from having champagne or wine. And then you've got the BHA or the BHT, butylated hydroxyanisole or butyrated toluene. These are used to preserve fats. Now these are really important because they've been proven to be carcinogenic which means they cause cancer. And they also have been shown to harm the reproductive organs and also to be harmful to embryos. So it's a really big no-no for, especially for dog breeders, right? So they're all the reasons why I really am not a great fan of commercial dog food. So what do you do? I mean, I know I've got four children and no doctor ever said to me, you must give your child kibble or commercial food because we just don't trust you to give your, your child a balanced diet. And what do they say instead? They say feed whole foods and give a good variety of them. So that's what I suggest you do with your breeding dogs. And uh, next week we're going to talk about how you can do that. Bye for now.